and now we have the Secretary of State, Michael Gove, saying he's going to make A-levels harder. Now, is, have they just woken up to the idea that they got easier? Well, I, I think as long as they're consistent, and if you're going to make them harder and then weaker and harder and then weaker, the poor guys that are taking their exams in the wrong year are going to get qualifications that are more difficult than the ones that have done it before. It's got to be consistency that counts. You, you go out and you get yourself an education, you do all the qualifications and you, you come through all these um, things and then you find out, you come out and you've got, there's no work because yeah. again of the immigration mm. that's coming in, all the qualified people from outside our country are coming in and taking the jobs that that other, our lot should be qualified and, and take. And there's no part so it's time crazy. work for the students between courses either because if you look at what's happening, they're all filled now by Eastern European people and they're lovely people. This place, this country is a magnet for people because they want to speak English. I mean, how many of our children want to go to La Latvia or Lithuania to learn Latvian or Lithuanian? No, they don't. Mm. But the other way around, they're all here because great international language, let's learn, let's learn English. I'm going to move us along to this week's hot topic and we're very grateful to Mike for doing a short film and we're going to look at the whole question of the European arrest warrant, mm. this week's hot topic. Hot topic. If you break a law in a country in Europe, not necessarily a British law, it could be an obscure one that you're not aware of, they could in fact uh, ask the British court for your extradition to their country and the British court has no means of denying them their rights because this is the European arrest warrant. So for example, if you are a plane spotter, and this happened in, to people from Tamworth, in my constituency and you take photographs of planes not knowing that that's illegal in Greece the Greeks when you when you come back can issue uh, an arrest warrant and have you taken over there and tried and that's what can happen I mean it has been in more serious cases than that we had one a gentleman from Leek who was accused of murder in Italy but he wasn't even there he hadn't been and it certainly wasn't him he was making pizzas at the time because that's what he does in Leek uh, but they wanted to extradite him. We stood in on that and stopped it because we could prove that he wasn't there. And also, uh, UKIP MEPs have been springing people from jails on the continent. One in particular was in Hungary, where two people were arrested. Under, under the arrest warrant, they were extradited from the UK. And they hadn't even got the evidence together. So these guys were languishing in jail in Budapest, just languishing in jail while they decided whether or not they find the evidence because they don't have habeas corpus. They do not have the ability, as we do in this country, to present the person to court and ask for a number of more days for them to be detained. Instead of that, they just bang them up in jail and leave them there. Hot topic. So, Mike, can I be arrested? Yes, and this, this to me, is another infringement of our sovereignty. Mm -hmm. Because, frankly, <coughs> if you went away and committed some dreadful crime, like picking your toenails in Latvia or whatever, you know, it's, <laughs> it's against the Lord to do that on buses, because that's obviously the kind of thing you would do. <laughs> and you were, you know, you came back, and then you had this international or European arrest warrant, and you were deported. <laughs> In the old days, they would have said, go away, you know, that's not illegal in Britain, and we're not going to allow him to be extradited, because he's a really nice chap, and he doesn't normally do that kind of thing. And you'd be safe. But in these days, the court has to obey the arrest warrant. It's worse than that, because, frankly, the Continentals don't have the same principles we have. They don't have habeas corpus, so they don't have to present the body, the person, to court, and ask for a number more days to find evidence. So, as I said there, you can languish in jail waiting for somebody to do something and nobody presses the button. So you, you're doing months in jail and you're probably not guilty, but you've been sent over there by a British court. That is outrageous. So, uh, what can be done? Is this, is well, this now it's carved been done. in? It's been done. Foolish people have voted for that. I voted against, as did all the UKIP MEPs, because, like I said, don't make a mistake, everything should be made 
in Westminster. Because if it's not made in Westminster, it doesn't mm. suit this country, in my view. Because let me tell you, if people do it over there, how are you going to know who did it? How are you going to vote them out? If you, know, if you see somebody making a mistake in Westminster, you vote against them. Or you play pop with them. You shame them. And eventually, they'll change the law in this country because you put the pressure on them. You can't do that in the EU. Once it's done, it's set in concrete. We weren't asked, I wasn't asked, if I want to be part of this elusive big black blob called the EU and the consequences of some of the decisions they're making. Yeah. I don't want someone telling, the thought of someone coming to arrest me for something I've been taken off to another country without what I see as my good old British system of justice, I think is terrible. This programme is helpful because this is educating, hopefully, people in, in realising the consequences, are, again, of being part of the European Union. We've lost our ability as a country to keep our system that we've had for years. As for the other countries wanting to have fiscal unity, that's fine if that's what they want, but we don't need that. We, we don't have the euro. We don't need fiscal uh, unity with them because we've got the pound. And I'm really surprised some of the others with their individual currencies need to do that unless they want to go in the euro. And most politicians do want to go in the euro. Politicians do, the people don't. And that's well, why. Because they have these fallacious ideas about all sorts of... Well, if you remember, we were being told to go into the euro because when you go on holiday, you can spend the same money in all the different countries. They don't even think forward enough to understand that all of these countries have different economic cycles and, not a, 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 and, and there's, always, there's, got, there's going to be all the strains and the difficulties of that and that if you're all in the euro then suddenly Portugal becomes very expensive and Greece becomes very expensive as they have and they're not, a, they're not encouraging tourism anymore those sort of uh, problems in the old days they would devalue and they would say oh we're out of step we'll devalue we want to attract people to Greece or Portugal they can't now because they're in the euro and it's killing them but isn't the devaluation of currency and the playing around with currency like that, something that uh, America are accusing China of? But we do it, don't we? We're doing it. We're printing money. Which devalues it, of course. Of course, yeah. You, you, they've just put 50 billion into the economy, which is bound to, isn't it? Mm -hmm. The government have printed that to stimulate the economy, but it's really diluting our pound. Why? Because the euro's probably devalue on the word world scene and this government don't want us to to move in a different direction so we're doing the same we're following the euro down i'm more about the practicality of the eu and the fact that it is not in my opinion democratic it can't be because every time it gives an opportunity to people to vote it ignores the result people right, try right. to have a referendum and the french voted against and the irish did as well against the lisbon treaty and so on and so on and at the end of the day, they look at that and think, oh, they've got that wrong. They got that wrong. They're going to have to do it again until they get it right. So it's like failing an exam. Uh, you got that wrong, you'll have to take it again. And that's all that happens. So mm. how is that dem democracy? Hello. And if you look at the, the president and the other people of the European Parliament, they're not elected. How are they elected? You know? Barroso, is, Barroso, who used to be a Maoist communist, from Portugal, you're talking about left wing. You don't get any left wing, more left wing than Maoist communists. He's not elected. He is by the MEPs, but he isn't by his people. A bit different to the American mm -hmm. situation where the president has to face the people, and I think more should. We've now, we've now got, we, we have lots of presidents in the EU. He's the president of the commission. We now have one of the parliament, Mr. Schultz, who's a German. And he, again, has been voted in by by the MEPs. And this is the, you, you were mentioning that uh, the Czechs are Eurosceptic, mm. and no wonder. They sent a delegation, including Germans, to the presidential palace not so long ago, telling them that they should support the Lisbon Treaty. And it was outrageous that these Czechs were standing up, really saying, well, we're not sure about the Lisbon Treaty. But when they went there, they took the flag of the European Union with them plonked it on the president's desk and said, fly this over your palace because those are the rules and that's what you should be doing. And the president was enraged because it was just like the Germans mm. invading the Sudetenland and telling them what to do. It's got no business of those people to tell him what flag he should fly over his palace. It's like coming to Buckingham Palace and telling the Queen, 
fly that flag over Buckingham Palace. No, I'm sorry, this is my palace. I wish you four were heading up our country. There you go. Yeah. There's somebody there. Five yeah. million against the two four. <laughs> <laughs> British people standing up for the truth and justice for GB. I was only a child when we had the vote regarding joining the EU. I think, I, was, I think it was called the common market. It certainly was. Mm. But it's all the same thing, let's face it. But I was against it then, and I still am. How can one outside this country decide what is right and best for Amen. this green and pleasant land? Amen. I agree with all I've heard tonight. Good on you all for standing up, speaking the obvious plain truth of the ma whole matter. Keep it up. Speak out for the truth. God bless you all. Amen. That's from AJ. <laughs> Hallelujah. A point was made there that hasn't been underlined, and that is that when it was, when it was the common market, that was specifically about trade, common market, not about loss of sovereignty. But now it's a union. It's a European union, which is like the United Kingdom. It's a, it's a union. And that's what this is about now. So we've lost the original vote. The original vote was on trade. Mm. Not about union and loss of sovereignty. We should vote again. Mm. Well, I'm going to just have one more EU topic. I, I had to, to come to this one. The pilots. What's happening oh. with the pilots? Well, they're, they're being told, aren't they, that uh, they can fly longer without a rest. Uh, that, not the international or the European arrest warrant, no, arrest. <laughs> and uh, it's dangerous because we have our own regulations here in Great Britain and our pilots are upset that these European laws mean that they have to fly longer and, of course, fatigue can set in. They can, after, they can be up for up to 22 hours. 22 hours, that's right. I yeah. wouldn't drive my car if I was up for 22 <laughs> no, hours. No, no, I think there's a co-pilot involved, <laughs> but I know what you mean, yeah. yeah. It's so, and this, and, and this is actually, they want the regulations to be less than we already have. We want our British reg regulations. If they're going to uh, do something positive, they should copy us, not the other way around, because their laws are worse than us. It reminds me of the British plug. They tried to ban the British three-pin plug because it didn't <laughs> comply with the European plugs. Yeah. And it was found that the British plug is safer than mm -hmm. theirs. So in the end, there was a derogation and we could keep ours. But right. nobody ever said, all right, why don't you change yeah. the three-pin plugs, yeah. which are safer. So it's always the wrong way around. We never win. I'd just like to say thank you for allowing me here today because Amen. it's been really entertaining for me. <laughs> well, I hope it's been <laughs> entertaining you. for the viewers. And uh, well, Mark? It's coming for me. Seek your God, folks, and see what is the right thing to do about who governs your lives. Amen. This has been the Politics Programme. I'm George Hargreaves. I want to thank uh, Pastor Fred Plum, Mike Natris, and Mark Taylor. Good night. God bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord.